share with you today probably one of the things I've been looking most forward to sharing with you at Christmas, and that is the story. And I've got the links below so you can check it out. And I'm actually going to look at my phone. The powerful story of when humanity chose a silent night. Flanders Field, 1914, World War I was raging on. World War I was one of the most cruel, horrible worlds, my, uh, wars my grandfather served in it. And uh, a lot of people just spent a lot of time in trenches and everybody was fa- fighting everybody. If you ever have the opportunity, go to Kansas City. It's worth almost going just to see this. The World War I Museum, the National World War I Museum, I think it's the international actually, is in Kansas City. And it's really cool and it helps you try and understand how in the world this war came about. You get an archduke who's killed, and then all of a sudden dominoes start just toppling, and people are spending years in trenches and dying and getting sick. It's just a horrible thing. So I wanted to contextualize this and understand that what was going on on Christmas Eve was that, this is in 1914, There were German soldiers and there were British soldiers, and they were fighting. Now, fighting means that basically they were lobbing stuff at each other because, again, this was a trench war. People were in trenches that were 8, 10 feet deep. You had to use ladders to climb down into them. They thought it was a way of staying safe. This was because there was a lot of, like, mustard gas and stuff like that, which would then blow over the trenches. So here it is. The worst war in human history at that point, I would say it's one of the worst to this day. And you've got all these people in these trenches. The ironic thing is the trenches were not necessarily that far from one another. You're not talking about my trenches here and your trenches a mile away. My trenches here, and if someone laughed or really talked loudly, I could hear the person in the trench over there. So what happened? And by the way, I'm going to leave you not only the link to the Smithsonian article and this uh, description, but I'm also going to leave you the wonderful song by, oh, his last name is McCutcheon. First name is, anyway, I'm going to, uh, John McCutcheon. Oh, I cry every time I hear this song. There was a British guard who was walking around the perimeter and he literally ran into a German guard on Christmas Eve at 8.30 p.m. in Flanders Field. The German guard who had been caught up in merriment because in their trenches they were singing Christmas carols, Silent Night predominantly, and uh, the German, the English were singing the first Noel. So this German is walking around. He runs into a British soldier and without thinking, he gives him a little flask of brandy and three cigars and says, Hey, listen, I tell you what, if you guys don't shoot at us, we won't shoot at you. And he walked away. And this guard went back down into the trenches and began to tell the British. And of course, the officers all said this was a plot. And they all said that everyone had to remain in place and that there would be no no truce. This was, this was war, and war continued 365. Then, as the Germans were singing Silent Night, the British began to sing loudly back to them, almost in competition. But then they stopped and began to listen to one another sing Christmas carols. And ultimately, Not only did the fighting stop, and this is where I'm going to probably lose it, they all crawled out of their trenches and they met in the middle of a battlefield to celebrate the day of peace, the day of love. They showed one another pictures of their families, they played games, they shared food.
And finally, they went back into their trenches. And the next day, the war resumed. This story does not tell me about a Christmas miracle. There were a lot of things that happened that night that caused this to take place. It tells me that human beings have the capacity to choose even war and peace in the very moment that they're preoccupied with the decisions that others have made. I'm looking, here it is. Lieutenant Johannes Niemann, a Saxon, who served with the 138th Third, recalled that Christmas morning. By the way, at one point, one of the Germans yelled out, we are Saxons, you are Anglo-Saxons. What do we have to fight about? And it was at that point that many of them began to come out onto the field. Lieutenant Neiman says, the mist was slow to clear and suddenly my orderly threw himself into my dugout to say that both the German and Scottish soldiers had come out of their trenches and were fraternizing along the front. I grabbed my binoculars and looking cautiously over the parapet, saw the incredible sight of our soldiers exchanging cigarettes, schnapps, and chocolate with the enemy. Later, a Scottish soldier appeared with a football, soccer, of course, which seemed to come from nowhere. And a few minutes later, a real football match got underway. The Scots marked their goal mouth with the strange, their strange caps, and we did the same with ours. In other words, they used their head, their head coverings, their caps to, to create what was considered a goal. It was far from easy to play on the frozen ground. This is what I want you to get. These people were in these trenches in the freezing weather keeping rigorously to the rules, despite the fact that it only lasted an hour and that we had no referee. A great many of the passes went wide, but all of the amateur footballers, all they, although they must have been very tired, played with huge enthusiasm. So literally after this war had raged on for over a year at this point after uh, Ferdinand was killed. And these people are in this frozen ground and their job is to kill one another and to construct ways to kill one another. And then not only do they come out to celebrate Christmas together, they play a soccer game in which they all abide by the rules. They won't take an advantage. To me, this shows, as I said, the human capacity to choose what is right and to make higher choices than even the people we are chosen, who, who have been chosen to lead us. Because the officers who witnessed this were not happy. And afterwards, on both sides, the German and the Scottish side. They were told that nothing like that would ever happen again, and if it did, it would be considered treason. But in that moment, human beings spontaneously chose love, peace. The part of the song that always makes me lose it is the end. John McCutcheon, you need to listen to this song. Whose family have I fixed within my sight? <sighs> One of the more interesting things about this was, of course, that the Germans and the Scottish were not the only ones fighting that day. French and the Russians were fighting as well, but the Russians did not participate. You know why? Not because they're the Russians, <laughs> and we've 
in our country vilified the Russians for many years. They're, they are our them. Every country must have a them. No, the Russians just simply hadn't adopted the uh, calendar that we used at that point, the Gregorian, uh, not the Gregorian, but they were using the J Julian calendar. And so for them, Christmas didn't happen for another 13 days on January 7th. Isn't it amazing how arbitrary days that human beings have agreed upon can change our lives? I've said from the beginning that one of the biggest problems with world peace is we consider it to be the ultimate be all. In other words, uh, I'm going to get a job doing this and then I'm going to cause world peace. Ha 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 ha. In other words, it's just outlandish. It wasn't outlandish that day. And it all started because one person said, Hey, y'all don't shoot at us. We won't shoot at you. Here's some brandy and cigars. I think this is the most powerful study in human psychology ever, both in the decisions that were made before, during, and even after when peace became cause for treason. I believe that there's going to be world peace in my lifetime. I've said that before. I'll say more about it at other times, but I truly believe it's possible. And I want to invite you, as John Lennon said, you may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. It only took a critical mass of the people in those trenches to believe that peace was going on in that moment. Not war. Oh, we're at war. Oh, now we're at peace. Tomorrow we'll be back at war. But it took a critical mass of people believing we're at peace. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Please share your comments. I'd be happy to hear any questions or comments that you have before we say goodbye. I want to announce something I'm going to do this year for the first time ever. It's not going to take long, but at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Christmas Eve, I'm going to come live and read Towards the Night Before Christmas. So invite your friends and family wherever you are. Just click it on. It won't take 10 minutes, but it'll give you a wonderful Christmas connection. And by the way, I feel compelled to say that I hope that my talking about Christmas, because it's my tradition, does not in any way offend anyone in theirs. And I honor and celebrate yours. Christmas gift to me from me, says Elena, was her best gift that she ever got. Kathy, chatty Kathy. It's okay, says Paula. Thank you. Sherry L. Elstein says, hello, Will and Jumpstart family. Happy Friday from Chile, South Florida. It is. I actually went to take Teddy out this morning. 55 degrees. I had to put some chrome on my dome. I was cold. Natasha's got a new picture. She looks so pretty as always. Natasha looks good. There we go. Nice to see you, Natasha. There's Greg. Handsome guy. All ready for Christmas. I can see it. And Jerome is going to be singing on Christmas Eve, one of my favorite singers. If you're lucky enough to be in Kansas City, find out where he will be, but socially distanced. And if you can watch it online, watch it online. Thank you, Elena. Ed Wilmot. But I've always wondered how they could go back to fighting after the respite. That's the interesting question, isn't it? That's the interesting question. It's that, I'm going to touch on this real quick, Ed, because it's that authority thing. Here's what I mean. Um, if you, they did a study once where they had people, they, they told people that, uh, here's a dial. All right, I'll use my phone. Here's a dial on the back of the phone. And uh, you're sitting there and there's somebody hooked up to electric shocks in the other room. And your job is to give them a little electric shock, little electric shock, little electric shock. And they literally, and, and the people in there would start to yell and scream. Now the person was not hooked up. It was all to mess with these people. And which by the way, it's come to be known as one of the most unethical experiments ever done. Um, however, what they did was they discovered that by telling people to press the shock, press the shock, at some point, a lot of people would quit. However, if the person telling them to put on the shock, to make the shock rather, was wearing a white lab coat, because we consider that such a authority, that the people would continue to shock the people till they screamed, begged, pleaded. Now, mind you, nobody was getting really shocked and then even pretended to pass out from the pain. Higher, higher. So my guess is, Ed, 
these authority figures with these ribbons on their outfits, on their uniforms, told them, get to it. And they did. And I have to say, once somebody shoots at you, it's not hard to shoot back, I would imagine. We'll be there, Elena. I hope that means you're going to be with me on Christmas Eve as I read Twas the Night Before Christmas. Natasha says, thank you. There's my good buddy, James Henderson. He says, good morning. Remember that in 1914, on Christmas Eve, just to have one person, then another, then another, then another, believed in peace. Believe in peace. Jerome says, Unity Temple on the Plaza, unitytemple.org, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. If you want to hear Jerome sing, and I really recommend you do it on Christmas Eve. Awesome, everybody. Uh, that'll be actually right when I'm reading Twas the Night Before Christmas, but I don't think Jerome necessarily will go on right at that time. So hear me do that and click over to him. Either way, listen, thanks so much. Have a wonderful week. I will be with you on Monday and Tuesday next week. The rest of the week is my time. Other than Christmas Eve, as I say, when I come in and I'm going to read Twas the Night Before Christmas to you all. I actually can probably recite it because we always did this at radio stations where I work. Bless you all. Thanks for being with me. And I will look forward to seeing you on Monday. Take care. Bye-bye. No more, no more complaining people. Their lives are changing. We're flying high, creating a complaint-free world. No more, no more complaining people. Their lives are changing. We're flying high, creating a complaint-free world. No more.